Right, well, online retailer Mercado Libre services 18 countries across Latin America and has recently expanded into banking services and cryptocurrency. Yahoo Finance editor at large Brian Sozzi sat down with the company's CFO Pedro Ant to discuss that and more at the Goldman Sachs Technology Conference in San Francisco. Take a listen. Great. So we run the largest commerce and fintech platform in Latin America, present in 18 countries in the region. We offer millions of SMBs and larger companies the ability to sell their goods on our marketplace. And then more interesting, over the last 10 years on our fintech platform, we have been offering financial inclusion to tens of millions of Latin Americans that are accessing digital payments, digital wallets, and banking services for the first time ever. This, these are volatile times for, for markets, for global economies. What are you seeing in terms of consumer demand in these emerging markets where you play? Great. So I think we still are beneficiaries of a secular trend of the digital and e-commerce and internet revolution. Uh, level of e-commerce penetration in Latin America is still relatively early on. The most advanced markets are maybe in the low double digits. Uh, many of our markets are still single digit percentage of retail happening online. And so these very strong secular trends have allowed our business to continue to grow and to deliver improving profit margins even within a tougher macro backdrop. I think a lot of U.S. investors think this very simple equation. Interest rates up because of the Fed, that impacts disproportionately many emerging markets. Is that the right way to think about it? I think there is a, 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 a flow through of interest rate environment, especially in high growth companies like ours. But again, I think our focus and, and on a relative basis, I think we've been performing better than many in our peer set because of this combination of earlier stage markets, high growth and a pretty unique um, proposition, I think, for global e-commerce companies, which is growth within a profitable business that's expanding margins. What are some of your hottest markets right now? So um, Mexico has been extremely strong for quite some time now, very competitive market. We continue to be market leaders. Brazil is still the largest market. It represents around 60% of our business, still growing quite nicely. And then a lot of opportunity in the Andean markets. So Colombia, Chile, Peru, uh, we enter those markets somewhat later and could potentially be big drivers of growth when we look at the next five to 10 years. Take us through the fintech side of your business. What does that business look like and, and where are you expanding? Right, so that's a business that initially started primarily as a payments platform, so facilitating online digital payments for both small merchants and consumers, initially only on our own marketplace and then on their own websites or digital properties. What's become interesting is that we've used that distribution that we've gained from processing payments to now start offering other financial services. So, for example, we have a burgeoning credit book. It's about $2.7 billion of credit. About 60% of the users that have taken out a loan from us, it's the very first time they've had access to credit. So this is phenomenal in terms of inclusion. It's a great business for us. Um, and it's an area of focus. We're now beginning to see what other financial services can we distribute at all. So savings tech and asset management will be a growth driver. We have a small insure tech business where we distribute insurance products to consumers. So the idea is to really be able to service our consumers with whatever financial services they need without having to have a banking relationship, but rather through the relationship they have with Mercado Pago. How much crypto do you still have on your balance sheet? Right. So our crypto investments were not very material. They were around 25 to $30 million. Obviously, the book value of that has come down as assets have adjusted in value. A lot of what we were doing there was the famous eat your own dog food. So we were holding crypto on our balance sheet to learn a little bit more about crypto, given that one of the key functions that we now offer users on our wallets is their ability to buy existing crypto assets to hold them on their wallet and to then sell them. So we do believe in crypto long term. We think it has a role within our treasury reserves, but it's a very small role. And a lot of that was really about learning more as a company about crypto as we were gearing up to launch crypto services to our users, which are now live on their wallets. Do you want to be a bigger player? Based on your learnings, sure, it's volatile, but do you want to be a bigger player in crypto? We do want to enable our users to be able to buy crypto, to trade in crypto 
crypto and to hold crypto. So we do want to have functionalities built into our wallets. We think that for emerging markets, certain crypto assets could be interesting as stores of value, but this is more a feature and a function that we want to be able to offer our users than necessarily it being a core of our own investment strategy. Lastly, biggest priority for next year. Uh, continuing to grow the business, continue to deliver expanding margins, and make sure that we're focused on disruptive tech that helps our users improve their lifestyles, sell better, and manage their finance better. Great stuff from Al Brian Sozzi there at the Goldman Sachs Tech Conference.